Show me things hidden for years to come. Ancient word, ancient truth. Show me things you have hidden. some secrets that have been kept from the eyes of men and it truly is a mystery there is a profound mystery a mystery that resides in the crux of this generation's reasoning a mystery that plagues the entire progression of a kingdom and for those who seek to know this wanted mystery I hereby delay your anticipation no longer a common belief is that repetition enforces knowledge. It's a general fact that most of our children are taught the basic elements of the world through repetition. You know. But it truly is mysterious how the key, the key secret to power completely eludes most of the church despite how repeated it is. I would like to share an ancient story from my village or paint an analogy I hope you would understand as clearly as it is said. We have Jolayemi and Downsy, two brothers, born, bred, and fed alike. There is not one disparity in their upbringing. There came a special occasion that marked their coming of age ceremony. A line of trees in their father's field was given to each of these young ones. They were both handed an axe to keep for the next day. They would both fell as many trees as they could before the evening of the next day. A very simple activity, if you ask me. Jolayemi and Downsy trained the night before. They put the muscles of their arms to work as they practiced their swings. This was going to be what would determine their readiness for the next activity. They practiced their stance that they would take as they are swinging their axe. And they mastered the pressure points of trees just to know the particular spots to strike. Oh, they worked so hard. By the time the thick silence of the night informed them how late it was, it was already midnight. They stopped the fight with nature and retired for the night. There was so much zeal and passion in their bones that they refused to eat dinner. They had no need for food. Jola was soon fast asleep and all he dreamt of were the swinging strokes he would take on his tree. But right before down, logged out of consciousness, a thought diverted his attention to his axe. And he grudgingly sat up to study it a little, just a little. He noticed something significant before sleep won him over. Jola woke up way before dawn. He was determined to take down as many trees as he could. He didn't bother waking his brother, let his lazy bones keep sleeping. He grabbed his axe, got to the field and set out to work. He was determined to surpass him in perfection. And shortly after Jola took off, Down roused from sleep. 
he realized his brother had taken off. And he was panicking. The time had gone. And he grabbed his axe, hoping to race to the field as well. When the final step he took the night before flashed into his mind, Dao reclined on his bed and looked at his axe. Then he got to work as well. A different one from Jola's work, but I would reveal that soon. Let's just say that three hours passed before Dao got to the field to fall his own set of trees. The village elders were worried that something must have happened to him. Jola was more concerned about something else other than his brother. The elders could see the hard work of Jola. He had been here before the crow of the cock roused everyone from his sleep. His sweat glistened on his body as the veins of his neck popped whenever he swung the axe. The child of his father, work and diligence is in his blood. But something was wrong. In over three hours, three hours, he hadn't fallen one tree. The mountainian structure of the tree seemed to dust away the impact his axe made to it. It truly was puzzling and confusing. This must be spirits at work. Spirits against the progress of his diligent and hardworking father that wants to confuse and tarnish the image of his son. Jola was then advised to hit harder, hit harder. So when Dao arrived the field, we can imagine the side looks the elders gave him. <laughs> Such an irresponsible young man. If his brother could do this much and have this little impact, he is better off not even trying at all. Amongst the snares and side remarks, Dao was focused on his tree. He brought out his axe. And with three swings, his first tree came crashing down. The silence that greeted the crashing of his tree was deafening. <laughs> Even a passerby lizard and a chicken that minded its business stared at the unfairness of life that just happened. Jola, like a man whose strength had finally walked out of his body, fell to the floor in amazement. Down went onto the next tree as if nothing happened. This one seemed bigger and more difficult than the other. And with four heavy blows, my people, the tree came down. It was too much for everyone. The elders grabbed down with two hands fixed on his shoulders. They asked him direct questions. What did you do? What charm do you have? Where have you hidden the secret anklets you are using to numb the swings of your own brother? Down as calm as water. And with a gentle voice said to them, you thought I had no desire to carry on the legacy of my father. You thought I was once sick with laziness without any concern for my father's business. Because you felt I was not visibly working for all to see like my brother was. He explained to them his secret. And he said while his brother was out early to labor with the tree, he walked to the secret of a successful task. He set out to sharpen his axe. For the blonde head of the two was alarming, so blunt that he couldn't cut a thread. It was at that point that Jola looked down at his axe as well and realized how useless it was. It was even more blunt than it had ever been due to its useless labor on the tree. He wept and wept for his wasted time. It was when the elders heard this that a saying in the ancient letters came alive. This particular saying that had been repeated from generation to generation came alive. It was from an elder that once lived on the land named Paulo. He emphatically stated that he was a witness to a set of people in the village of Rome that have a zeal for the things of the master, but not according to knowledge. We will not be speaking amiss when we say that it truly is not enough to have a vision or a mission. But the understanding to tarry in the place of communion with the master, it is not enough to have a goal or tactics and strategies for actualizing the goal. Once you are dependent on your strength for its success, you can be certain of failure. 
This fellowship with the Spirit of the Lord produces the sharpening and precision of one's targets. Your acts cannot fail you once you spend time grooming it. We groom our acts by developing intimacy with the Lord. Others may appear zealous and truly hardworking. You may desire the strength they have to work, but you realize that something is calling you to wait in his presence. You desire to be everywhere like your peers and you are... This morning, I asked you, she just started to be from the master, despite her sister's displeasure, the only consistent anointing of the Lord Jesus, the one that found the one thing that is evil, the desire to know the heart of the Lord and all her activities. It is only then that your service or hammering on your tree will make an impact. It is only then that your dreams will be precise. It is truly just a matter of time. Do not run out before you are already baked and cooked. In the secret place of the Lord, far be it from those who validate things in his love. But research for yourself any magnificent structure tree and take a glimpse at its unseen roots. The roots of a tree validate its structure. You develop your roots in the place of fellowship and oneness with the Lord. It is only then that you truly be worthy of the work you are called. So, this is the ancient story from my village, one that I've told many times before. 